As soon as we graduated from college, we decided to hit the road. We went on a big six-month trip. We can usually store food for about two weeks, so we can go about two weeks without having to go back to civilization, so to speak. And we have our GLH2O that allows us to collect water from streams, rivers, lakes, you name it. When COVID hit, all of our work evaporated into thin air. Hi, Soyan. And I'm Mac and welcome to our home on wheels. We've been on the road for eight and a half years, um, and over that time we've covered an incredibly wide variety of vehicles. We've owned both pop-top and high-top vehicles and we've personally found that we love pop-tops because they offer excellent aerodynamics on the road and plenty of living space when we're camping. And we also love the 4x4 capability of a pickup truck to get to all those out-of-the-way places that we love to go. In total it takes 6 buckets to unlock the top. It really doesn't take any time at all and there are 6 more in there. Welcome to the inside of our home. So, we're looking at the back of the camper, the back end. In previous vehicles for us it seemed like everyone had to do the same thing at the same time. If a meal was being prepared, everyone was preparing it. If everyone was working, that's what has to happen. But the nice thing about this is that someone can be sitting here doing the work, a meal can be prepared, someone might still be lying in bed. I just think it gives us a little bit of autonomy within our space and kind of gives it the illusion of feeling a lot bigger than it actually is. Back here serves a lot of purposes for us. It's our desk, it's our dining area, it's our office. This also converts into a bed and underneath each of these benches there's storage all the way down there as well. These two bench seats hold a tremendous amount of gear for us. We have two collapsible rafts down here. Backpacking gear, climbing gear. This has allowed us to take things that were stored outside of the vehicle in previous configurations and be able to move them inside. So for us we can comfortably seat two people on either side of this dinette and some other versions fit more stuff which would be great for us but we love our compact size. This is perfect for us and our cat. This is our kitchen. For context we are on the driver's side of our truck. Another reason it's so nice to have a rig is that this is all living in one place. It feels very secluded. We have a two burner stove here. We have a sink, a refrigerator and plenty of storage for all of our cooking supplies. We have a stove, a water heater and all of that is on this side. This is actually the largest fridge we've ever had, so while it may not be the largest refrigerator in the world, it's doing just fine for us. I would say the vast majority of our meals are made at home because we have an incredibly capable truck. We spend most of our time very secluded. We are totally self-sufficient when it comes to energy and even as of this year water, depending on the environment we're in. So we have the ability to stay outside for a long period of time. And if we think about the future, we can usually store food for about two weeks, um, so we can go about two weeks without having to go back to civilization, so to speak. Another thing that we love about having a person height surface here is that one of us can work in the office lunchroom while another can stand up here working. When you're in such a small space and you're working from home, it's nice to have the option to stand up and work if you want to. Mac and I met in college and Mac's parents would frequently talk about a road trip that they took right after they graduated from college and it was very informative for them and really a big milestone in their lives. Ah, that inspired me quite a bit. So as soon as we graduated from college, we decided to do the exact same thing and hit the road. We took a big six-month road trip.
At first we were just looking for a new place to live, but we realized that we actually loved the movement and traveling a lot more than we thought we would. That kind of snowballed into where we are now, eight years later we're still going in. We still love it. Over the course of eight and a half years our careers have changed a lot. Owen was and still is a motion graphics designer and I was a graphic designer and illustrator. But when COVID hit all of our work evaporated into thin air and it gave us a chance to step back and think about what we really wanted. In that summer we pooled resources with a few other couples who were also living on the road and decided to film it. After that summer we realized we had all this footage that we could do something with and we were able to get funding to create a series that was called Summer A Drift and the rest is history. We've been filmmakers ever since. It's been really great to be able to capture all of the amazing places that we have the privilege of seeing. Now, in front of the front of the truck is our A bed, so at the top down you just see like a thin little strip sticking out over our cab. But when the top is up it's our bed, so even though the space above our bed is relatively small, we've never had any issues with it. In a lot of our vehicles we had even less space above the bed. So it doesn't seem to bother us at all. In fact, I found that I sleep even better. In a small space it feels water cozy, you know? I have to, uh, we have a ton of storage space which is huge. All of our clothes are in here plus a lot of work-related stuff, games, important stuff like cat, you know, that's important for the road. Um, towards the front and back of the camper we have these black panels, that's what helps in the pop-up process. It's pretty easy. And this little bar you just push it in, lock it in place, and then it can be moved out of the way. Here on the walls of the camper the pop-up roof is like the outer soft side part is like a plasticized material that's totally waterproof. Then we have an opaque layer that just blocks out the light. We have a clear layer, so it can be but still protect us from the elements. We have a screen and then we have the thermal bag which is the one that faces inward and it's this padded part. And that just keeps us insulated from both the heat and the cold. And it makes a significant difference. We spend a lot of time in sub-zero temperatures and we do really well here with that. Wow! And our heater, our heater is a propane heater. It runs on the same propane that powers our stove. We have two 10-pound tanks and they last us forever. That same heater also runs our tankless on-demand water heater. This corner of the camper is the nerve center of everything. Below me is all of our power management and a 20-gallon water tank that we can fill with city water or from streams, rivers, lakes, whatever. We'll get to that a little bit later. In here we have 405 amp-hour lithium batteries powering all of our batteries. We have a 180-watt rigid solar panel on the roof. We also have a 240-watt folding panel that we deploy when we need to. We also have alternator charging from our RR Manager 30. So red vision here is kind of an interface that gives us all the information that we need. It gives us our solar readings, the status of our battery, how much water we have. We can also control our lights and most of our appliances through this. We can also control it through our phone which is very convenient. So we can turn on the lights if we get to camp after dark and just turn them on to see when we get out of the car. And one of the nicest things that we have connected is our Starlink that we have converted to 12 volts and mounted on the roof. So, we can turn on Starlink with the push of a button without having to unplug any wires or anything like that. And by converting it to 12 volts it uses about 50% of the power that it was using before. We have some extra bags here to hold our cords and chargers and things like that. And in this cabinet pictured here is our spice cabinet and a variety of pantry items. We travel with our cat and so he needs a litter box. So where the optional bathroom would have gone for this camper is actually where her litter box is. So she has a bathroom. We don't. I guess in an emergency situation we could use it, but luckily it never comes to that. Uh, we have a shovel and that's our main outhouse. 
We'll take a hike and find a nice quiet spot and that's where we'll go. Uh, we also use biodegradable cat litter. We use wood pellets and so when we finish our own cat burrows we can bury some of theirs as well. One of the big draws to life on the road is that the cost is super cheap. So, we hit the road in the beginning as a way to save money as well and I would say our monthly costs typically range from $1,000 to $2,000. I think our biggest expenses are gas, car insurance, food, and Starlink. In that order probably. We're very fortunate to partner with a lot of brands in building this van. I would say the value is around 200,000, but we don't have an exact breakdown of the costs. Here on the driver's side of the truck is most of the utility area. In this first storage box we have some water equipment. We have hoses, filtration, and our guzzle H2O that allows us to collect water from streams, rivers, lakes, you name it. It's got a carbon block and VLED filtration. It also has a built-in water pump so we can take it to some streams and pump the water up to the fill tank which is right here on this side of the truck. Next up we have our, our heater and our water heater. We also have a shore power outlet. We have an outlet for an outside shower. Right here in this last storage box we have some of our tools. Yeah. And right here at the end we have an inlet for our additional solar panel. Here on the back of the truck are some of my favorite things about our camper and they're really easy to miss. And the first one is that this Australian rig has this amazing huge drawer and there's a lot of outdoor gear in here. Stuff that we use at camp, tripods and that kind of stuff. We were able to install all of our monitors and parking sensors and the backup camera that's under here. We have max tracks, which are fur and we get stuck in the sand. And then we have two bags that we use, one for trash and one for recycling. Always trying to get that stuff back to where it belongs. Here in the front of the truck we have some of our recovery gear. Because we spend so much time in really remote places, we often go long periods of time without seeing anybody. It's important that we can be self-sufficient, so, on our front bumper we have a we have a lot of lights. We have an upgraded brake system to accommodate the weight that we carry around all the time, right? Non-topo. And then in our rig we have an additional 20 gallons of water, the little petcock to access it is here. In this box we have an air compressor that allows us to deflate and reinflate tires when driving over rough terrain. It just makes the ride a little bit smoother and also protects our tires. This is where our propane tanks live. We have a fame awning, some exterior lights. This is the door to our camper. The step is minimal. We didn't want to have to lug anything huge around. And then in this last storage box is where we carry our camp chairs. The world is a big, beautiful place and you need to get out and get to know it. And I know that not everyone has the opportunity or desire to live like we do, but I just want to be able to convey the feeling that we've experienced for so long in and I just want people to approach the world with more openness. I think a really common theme in our work is the personal and emotional growth that comes with traveling seeing new places, new things, and meeting new people. Um, I feel like it puts you in uncomfortable situations, but once you get past that and you get comfortable with the discomfort, it really opens the door to a lot of cool and interesting interactions. Thank you so much for enjoying the tour of our home, RV, office, just everything. If you're interested in following our journey or our work, you can find us at Bound for Nowhere on Instagram, YouTube, I guess all the places on the internet, including our website. Alright, thank you and I think we'll catch up with you later.